everybody, Peace and Harmony here with you today. How to start an exit strategy from a psychopath or a narcissist relationship in your life. Maybe this person is just obsessive, maybe they are borderline, they're freaking out between reality and reality, they're cheating on you, they're making you paranoid, you're just overall unhappy. Things are just not clicking, things are not going right. You could be living with them, you could be working with them. Either way, you want out of the relationship. But you could have found yourself in too deep. If that is the situation, you definitely, definitely can put together a strategy. You absolutely, positively can put together a game plan, and this is going no contact. For some people, I find it's easier for them than others. Some people absolutely, positively are not comfortable going no contact. They are depending on this person for some reason, um, either their finances, um, their support, uh, they have children together, they um, are just feeling like they can't live uh, their life without this person in their life. Um, whatever excuses you might be making to yourself, it is what it is. And um, things can be different for you, but it has to be a conscious choice. Sometimes people need a little nudge, people little, need a little bit of help, people need a little bit of strategy and resolution, and that is why I'm talking to you here today. How to go no contact. How to get an exit strategy together for yourself. If it's been four years and your strategy is not working for you, it's time to change things up. It's definitely not working. You're not utilizing the tools that are out there, or you're not committed to the process. If you're interested in leaving this person, you think it would be a good idea, but you're not committed, you're not going to get there because you're just kind of interested, you're on the fence, so to speak. So basically what you need to do is basically determine, am I going to do this? Do I need to do this? Yes or no? It's a yes or no situation. And if it is yes, and you have determined yes, but you're not courageous enough, you're not bold enough, well, you definitely positively need to get up the gumption or you need to hit another rock bottom. And, you know, hitting rock bottom is not a fun situation. Sometimes it's gonna get messy, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. However, I wanna give you some tools and strategies of what to do and how to handle it. Number one, going no contact. Meaning, no contact. No contact. No contact. You are going no contact. You are not talking to them. You are not calling them up on the phone. You are not taking their phone calls. You are not emailing them. You are not responding to their emails. You are not friends with them on Facebook or any social media, Snapchat, Instagram, whatever social media that you're doing with them, video chat, all the different social media, MySpace. Okay, you're no longer in contact with them on those forums. You're seeking out new people now. You are going no contact. You are not looking them up on the, your, the gallery of your phone. You are deleting pictures of them. You are deleting numbers of them. You are deleting emails from them. If you have determined that this person is a hazard to you, they are a narcissist. They are using you. They are not in a balanced relationship with you, e even footing. They're not really caring about you. And it's time to go no contact. It's not serving you. It's, if it's driving you crazy, you're getting brainwashed, you're very extremely unhappy. This person could be a psychopath. They've done things that have really kind of scared you. Um, they've pushed things to the limit with you. Things are too risky. Things are extremely uncomfortable. You need to go no contact. But if you are extremely um, addicted to them, meaning you're so brainwashed, you know, that you're kind of stuck, you need to um, deprogram yourself, kind of unbrainwash yourself. And you're not going crazy. This absolutely positively can be done. It's very uncomfortable in the beginning, but that discomfort is what should be propelling you away from them. <laughs> you know, I mean, if they're strangulating you, um, you know, doing some crazy things, violating you, exploiting you, um, you or your kids or your property, 
you know, there it's going to get worse. It just it's going to get worse. It's not gonna it's not gonna plateau. <laughs> It's going to get worse, and you don't want to stick around to find out more of how crazy they can be because that's not what you want to fill up your bucket with in life. You want to fill up your bucket with the finer things of life, the finer people in life, the better sounds in life, the better sensations in life than going paranoid and crazy and yelling in abusive situations. It's not very productive, and people spend years of their life on that treadmill. It's just, it's not going to get you where you want to be no matter how hard you try. Please check out the video on being codependent and a learned helpless. If, you're, if that is you in your situation, please, please, please use some of those tools and resources on how to get yourself out of those situations. If you can't do it yourself, definitely seek professional help from a domestic shelter um, in your community. There's loving wonderfully kind people and resources who are working to support you round the clock places to live clothes to wear people to talk to food to eat there are resources for you so please please take advantage of you or help a friend in need who's in that situation um, however though you know getting into um, you know becoming happy and empowered for yourself um, it is definitely a, per, a, a permission-based thing, co coming out of the dark in that situation. You have to give yourself permission to go no contact. You have to s say, okay, I can do this. I give my, myself permission to be a person now. This person did not want this for me. You have to want it for yourself. It's a very strange thing. If you have been in this relationship for a long time, maybe your entire life, it's a very strange new, strange meaning new, not strange meaning bad, strange meaning uncomfortable, unfamiliar. It's a very strange thing um, to be supportive of yourself, uh, to give yourself permission to go out and live your life. So going no contact has to be a permission-based thing. And uh, that means not feeding into um, not only you know them but the role that they place you into as well let's go there um, no contact meaning you know removing yourself from circles where you might find them no contact you know hanging around the bars the clubs um, the parties where you might normally associate with them you might even need to you know change your ch your church you know well if it's like well you're trying to tell them, well, you should leave and I should be able to stay here, let it go. Do, you know, get your hands off the, you know, it's like I've seen couples, you know, who, who've got two hands on a, uh, on a Christmas ornament, you know, mine, yours, mine, yours. I mean, you don't need to stay in that one situation. It doesn't matter who has the Christmas ornament, let it go and move on. It's like the old Lego, my ego situation. Remember that commercial, Lego, my ego? You know, who's got my ego or whatever, waffle, you know, let it go. You can find another waffle. <laughs> you can make new waffles. You can find new Christmas ornaments. You can find a new church. You can find a new school. You can find a new apartment. You can find new friends. You can make new acquaintances. You can create new relationships. You can create new money. You can create the money that you need to live a happy life. It is there within you. You have to believe it. You have to live it. You have to own it. If you think that this narcissist is the only one who can take care of you and you cannot take care of yourself, I think you're believing a fallacy. And you're not utilizing all the resources that are available to you to help empower you to live a life of independence on your own. So you need to maybe let that saturate and let that marinate a little bit and realize, hey, I do have what it takes. I can do this. Yes, I can. We're going back to our I statements, our I am statements. I am a good person. I am worthy of a life of living independent. I am worthy of living a happy life. I deserve a great life where I'm, I'm free to pursue my interests and be treated with respect. I deserve to be treated with respect. I deserve to be talked to in a respectful manner. I deserve to be acknowledged for the wonderful person that I am. I, it, I deserve to be treated for as being a, a, a complete human being, a whole human being, 
and not just in the role of taking care of, of this person. These are some of the trains of thoughts that you need to start click into, that you're going to click into and start to resonate and believe and say and turn around in your life so that you can make it a habitual process because being in contact with this abusive person has created a unhealthy habit in terms of thought process, in, thought of a, in terms of emotional process, in terms of a physical process, physically being with them, physically being afraid all the time. All this is registered in a physical emotion. The muscles have a muscle memory which state which keep this locked in place just like when you're typing you know uh, that's a muscle memory da, 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 da. you know you have memorized this you've learned this it's, it's pre-programmed you can do it automatically the fear and emotions work in the same way the fear you can just like it's natural for you to type because you've learned it same thing with your muscles your muscles will go into that, that fear state your mind the same thing will go into the automatic, familiar thought patterns that have been keyed into you. Yes, I know this is a little deep, but we, you're going to have to get this. You can get this in order to release yourself and let go. Your thought process of being stuck and addicted with this person and being in, in a relationship, in an abusive relationship with them has become habitual. Just like it, it's just so easy for you to type because you've learned it, or it's just easy you know, for you to drive a car, you've learned it, it's habitual, it's automatic now. Same thing is, the same familiar automatic thoughts that you've been engaged in with this person, the same automatic feelings of feeling less than, unworthy, un, un, incompetent, um, constantly criticized and judged to be a, 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 a undeserving person, not good enough, um, never giving enough, all these thoughts that they have created within you have been programmed and be on automatic pilot. The thoughts and go to create the emotions which go to create the feelings which go to create more of the same thoughts and feelings. It's kind of a cycle between your thoughts, feelings, and emotions which then become beliefs which then direct and guide your life. I mean, it's like the boy who said, you know, I can, you know, I can, I can, you know, I think I can, or the little engine that should, or could, or, you know, what is that uh, nursery rhyme, the little engine that could, I mean, I think I can, I think I can, you know, and then the, it ends up getting up the hill. I mean, it's, it's the same thing, and it has to come from somewhere. The narcissist is not going to encourage you to become the best person that you are because they've got you under their thumb. You know, Mick Jagger, under my thumb. You know, the Rolling Stones. I mean, come on. You know, um, now you have to really become aware of this person's negative impact and how it got you to where you are today so you understand, okay, aha. That's why I am here today. This is what's perpetuating me to stay in the situation. And here's what I have to do now to change it up and get myself out of that situation, feeling a, little, feeling a little bit better, thinking a little bit better, behaving a little bit better. My behaviors are now in sync with how I want things to be and the relationships I want them to become. And eventually, even though it's new, letting go of that familiar role with that person which is being abused, uh, love bombed and discarded, to a new situation where it's a higher level for you and stable. Not the ups and downs, remember? Not the up and down, you know, where it, we're, you know, really in love and then we're deflated and trying to figure it out, you know, up and down, up and down. You want things now to be more stable. You know, very, you know, things go smoothly. Things continue to go progressively and consistently smoothly. That's the new you that you want to bring about in your healing and recovery. Using these tools, the recovery journal, learning that things like learned helplessness can be unlearned, can definitely empower you to heal in a complete manner and live the life of your dreams and desires and make them your reality. The sooner you do it, the sooner you're going to get there.
peace and harmony with you here today. Hope these videos help. Please share and subscribe for more great tools, videos, and discussions. Love you. Have a beautiful day.